Hello, and welcome back to Celestial Chronicles, where we dive deep into the mysteries of the Bible and explore lesser-known texts that have fascinated scholars and believers alike. Today, we're delving into a particularly intriguing book, the Book of Enoch. Have you ever wondered who Enoch was and why his book isn't included in the traditional Christian Bible? Well, you're in the right place. In this video, we'll uncover the origins of the Book of Enoch, explore its fascinating contents, and understand why it isn't considered part of the canonical scriptures. We'll also discuss the two Enochs mentioned in the Bible and look at how their stories connect to this ancient text. By the end of this video, you'll have a clearer understanding of the Book of Enoch and its place in biblical history. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more insightful discussions on biblical texts and their hidden meanings. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Let's get started. Who was Enoch in the Bible? First, let's clarify who Enoch was. Interestingly, the Bible mentions two different Enochs. The first Enoch is the son of Cain, who was the son of Adam and the brother of Abel. Cain's story is quite dramatic, as he committed the first recorded murder by killing his brother Abel. In Genesis 4 verse 17, we read, Cain knew his wife, and she conceived, and bare Enoch, and he built a city, and called the name of the city, after the name of his son, Enoch. The second Enoch, whom we are more interested in today, is mentioned in Genesis 5. This Enoch was the son of Jared, making him Adam's great, 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 great grandson. He stands out because, unlike most others in his genealogy, he did not die but was taken by God. Genesis 5 verse 24 states, And Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. This Enoch is also the great-grandfather of Noah, the builder of the ark. What makes Enoch so unique in biblical history? Well, he is one of only two people who did not experience death but were taken directly to heaven by God. The other person is the prophet Elijah, who was taken up in a whirlwind as described in 2 Kings 2 verse 11. What happens in the book of Enoch? Now, let's shift our focus to the book of Enoch itself. The book of Enoch is an ancient Hebrew apocalyptic text, and it's quite a fascinating read. There are actually three books of Enoch, but for simplicity, we will focus on the first book, often referred to as one Enoch. The book begins with the fall of the Watchers, a group of angels mentioned in Genesis 6 verses 1 to 2. These angels, or sons of God, saw the daughters of men were beautiful and took them as wives. The book of Enoch expands on this story, detailing how these fallen angels had children with human women, resulting in a race of giants known as the Nephilim. These giants, according to Enoch, were responsible for much of the wickedness on earth, including witchcraft and other sins. Enoch 1 also includes dialogues between God and various angels, such as Raphael and Gabriel, who are tasked with executing God's judgment. The book lists around 200 fallen angels and describes their punishment and the chaos they caused on earth. One of the most striking features of the Book of Enoch is its description of Enoch himself as a messenger to these fallen angels. He is depicted delivering God's message that they will find no peace or mercy due to their actions. Another fascinating part of the Book of Enoch is the description of Noah's birth. According to this text, Noah was born with white hair and a bright disposition, which initially made his father Lamech doubt whether Noah was truly his son. Methuselah, Noah's grandfather, seeks out Enoch for advice. Enoch reassures Methuselah that Noah is indeed Lamech's son and reveals that Noah and his family will be spared when God destroys the earth with a flood. This portrayal of Noah adds an extra layer to his character, blending elements that align with the Bible with more legendary and fantastical details. So, when was the Book of Enoch written? Scholars estimate its composition dates between 300 and 200 BC, placing it between the Old and New Testaments. It's important to note that the book is a compilation of various texts, so some parts may be older than others. This timeline makes it highly improbable that Enoch, who lived many thousands of years earlier, was the actual author. Instead, it's believed that the book was written by multiple authors over time. Interestingly, the book of Enoch is referenced in the New Testament. Jude, the brother of James, quotes it in his letter. Jude 14-15 says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints, to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds. This shows that early Christians were aware of the book and found some of its content relevant. Why isn't the book of Enoch considered scripture? Despite its intriguing content, the book of Enoch is not considered scripture by most Christian denominations. For a book to be considered scripture, it must be seen as divinely inspired and authoritative. The books that make up the Bible have undergone rigorous scrutiny and have a long history of acceptance by the early church. Several factors contributed to the Book of Enoch not being included in the biblical canon. One major reason is that its teachings do not consistently align with those of the accepted books of the Bible. Furthermore, the early church did not universally accept it. The Third Council of Carthage in AD 397 ratified the books that are now included in the New Testament, and the Book of Enoch was not among them. While some fringe groups do include the Book of Enoch in their canon, the majority of Christian denominations do not. The Bible is seen as the complete and authoritative Word of God, consisting of 66 books that tell a cohesive story. The Significance of the Book of Enoch Despite not being part of the canonical Bible, the Book of Enoch remains significant for several reasons. 
it provides a unique perspective on biblical events and characters, particularly the story of the Watchers and the Nephilim. It also offers insight into early Jewish and Christian beliefs about angels, demons, and the end times. The Book of Enoch's influence can be seen in various apocalyptic literature and in the writings of early Christian theologians. Its vivid descriptions and dramatic narratives continue to captivate readers and spark discussions about its place in biblical history. In conclusion, the Book of Enoch is a fascinating and complex text that offers a window into ancient Jewish and early Christian thought. While it is not considered part of the canonical Bible, its stories and themes have left a lasting impact on religious literature and continue to intrigue scholars and believers alike. Thank you for joining me on this journey through the Book of Enoch. If you found this video interesting, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to Celestial Chronicles for more deep dives into biblical texts and their hidden meanings. Hit the notification bell so you never miss an update. And I'd love to hear your thoughts, what do you think about the Book of Enoch? Do you believe it holds any divine inspiration? Let's continue the conversation in the comments below. Until next time, keep exploring, keep questioning, and keep your eyes on the heavens.